Excellent. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, we, we've talked a little bit about the androgen receptors, and this I feel, you know, everyone, you know, if they're getting blood or saliva tests, right, you see total testosterone, you see uh, free testosterone, that sort of thing. But this stuff's only so useful as the kind of the health of those androgen receptors, right, uh -huh. uh, whether they're extracellular, intracellular. So what are some of the things that we can do to help support the health of our cell receptors? Because I feel that's a not – often addressed point, but very important. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's a great, great point. So uh, first of all, just taking a step back, a lot of the guys who are listening might not know about what total testosterone and all these things are. So I'm going to touch on it briefly. Sure. Okay. So total testosterone is the, if you counted every single testosterone molecule in your body, that's your total testosterone. Okay. Now, total testosterone is not that important because a lot of testosterone in the body is bound to different proteins that mm -hmm. do not that don't allow it to actually be used, right? And that's where free testosterone comes in. Free testosterone is that which is being able to use when you need it, right? So, for example, nighttime erections are testosterone dependent, right? It's called a, a nocturnal penile tumescence. It's basically, mm -hmm. you know, something like morning wood or erections that happen during REM sleep. Those are testosterone dependent. So testosterone that is free is able to be used for those specific types of tasks. OK, now mm -hmm. then there's something called bioavailable testosterone, which is essentially the most important one. And that is because that testosterone is the free testosterone plus the testosterone that is not bound very tightly or very strongly to proteins, right? Mm -hmm. So bioavailable testosterone is what we want to associate most with what we want to gain, right? And that, that's the ones bound to the albumin, but not sex hormone binding globulin, correct? That's exactly correct? right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're bound to albumin. There's also testosterone can also bind to estrogen, uh, huh. for example, and other molecules that have 1, one or 2% uh, chance to, to do that. But yeah, albumin is, is what uh, you got it right. Yeah, okay. so in terms of receptors, right? So the way we want to think of receptors is that that is sort of the limiting factor. That is the bottleneck when it comes to uh, just becoming. So there, there's two. Let's take another step back, right? Just before I explain that, there's two categories of men, right? There's hypogonadal and eugonadal, right? Hypogonadal is low testosterone. It has been classified clinically as low testosterone. And then eugonadal is essentially those that don't have low testosterone. So they are in the, the good reference range. And just for some practical thing for you guys, um, so if you're listening and you've already done a testosterone test, just keep in mind that those references that they usually give you at the blood clinic are kind of skewed simply because they had to do those references when the blood clinic actually got started, right? Which could have been 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 15 years ago. And that reference range is from that many years ago. And usually it's old people who do these testosterone tests because these types of tests weren't so prevalent like they are today it's that, that young men can do mm -hmm. that. So take that reference range with a grain of salt. And so, so in one sense, I always stress quantitative measurements, keep track of numbers. But then in this specific, this is sort of like an outlier where you can look at the number, but also look at the qualitative aspects of low testosterone and right. base it on that. Super important. Yeah, we did. I did a podcast interview with uh, Dr. Rick Cohen where we kind of talked about the art of testing. Uh, because Even though there's these numbers, right, and we think it's science and exact, there really is, like you said right there, there's the issues with that, you know, different times of testing, how that can affect everything. So you really do have to look at both, as you're saying, the quantitative and the qualitative aspects of it. Plus people are individuals. So just because it's in the reference range doesn't mean that's optimal or healthy for you as an individual because different people are going to be different, right? Absolutely, man. That's so true. So true. Uh, now let's get to finally the androgen receptor uh, paradigm. It's so cool, right? So you can, you can pair an androgen receptor concept to literally any receptor, right? Because receptors work in a similar way, even though 
for example, a dopamine receptor is extracellular, uh, a, a testosterone receptor and androgen receptor is intracellular, they are still, they can still serve as bottlenecks and the limiting factor in getting gains based on whatever you want to do, right? So let's tackle this prog problem from a perspective of watching porn, right? Because this is a big topic. I know a lot of, a lot of the guys listening probably watch porn and masturbate and so on and so forth. I know a lot of my guys, when I do surveys and stuff, uh, they do have... It's kind of something everyone does, but no one talks about, right? Oh, man, for sure. <laughs> and you know what, what, I, what, I, what I do with my guys is I do surveys, which are anonymous, so mm -hmm. they are very frank, man. I mean, they'll tell me, hey, dude, I masturbate six to seven times a day. <laughs> you know, take yeah. it or leave it, you know? Uh, it was really interesting. So, so the way it works is if you get a crazy release, and what I mean is like a supra threshold release of any kind of neurotransmitter or hormone, what's going to happen is that these receptors are going to get saturated. Right. So when you look at, for example, for porn addiction, you can think of like a dopamine receptor, like a D2 receptor. If you watch a lot of porn, then these receptors tend to get saturated. And that is when desensitization happens. Right. So even though you have all this dopamine in the synaptic cleft, which is basically the space between two synapses, there is nowhere for them to go. Right. Where, where what are they going to bind to? Because these receptors are now. Uh, saturated. There are no more receptors there, right? And similar paradigm you can think about when it comes to androgen receptors, even though they're inside the cell, right? Because mm -hmm. if you get a lot of testosterone uh, release, right? So here is where TRT comes in, right? Testosterone replacement therapy. A lot of uh, steroid users, a lot of uh, you know juicers and, and people who are on gear, they're injecting themselves with testosterone. So the, this testosterone, it has to bind to androgen receptors to actually do its thing, right? So as it's binding now, what's happening is these androgen receptors are getting depleted, right? They're getting desensitized, and you're telling your negative feedback system in the brain to stop releasing the hormones that are producing testosterone, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's like a double whammy. Not only are your receptors being uh, depleted and desensitized, but the the natural production of these uh, hormones or neurotransmitters will be significantly lower. Right. So uh, besides, you know, not getting TRT or steroids, uh, what are some of the things we can do that just help support, I guess, the healthy functioning of the androgen receptors uh, just in general? I would say that you should keep a balance in terms of your lifestyle. Right. So, for example, a lot of people, you know, for example, androgen receptors will be increased if you do compound movements. Right. So whatever increases testosterone also tends to increase androgen receptors. I mean, these these this system is working in tandem. Right. So right. it's not that if you're boosting testosterone, it's not just you can get a bunch of testosterone in your body, but then there's no receptor happening. Right. Receptors have to balance out the testosterone that is being formed, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not going to happen, obviously, in a linear way. It's going to happen in a nonlinear way. So whatever you're doing in terms of lifestyle uh, to increase your testosterone levels tend to also increase the receptor levels, although this research is not as conclusive and it has not mm -hmm. been done as much as the just the boosting testosterone research.